This is Chrissy cooking at home, and I'm Chrissy. This is Nellie, our newest addition to the family. She's going to be helping. <laughs> Isn't she? Yeah. Um, today, I want to show you one of um, mine and my sweetheart's favorite fish meals. It is a um, crispy tilapia with salt and vinegar roasted potatoes. Sometimes I do some sauteed green beans, but I don't have the ingredients for that. So no green beans today, just the potatoes and the fish. So let's get started, shall we? I'm testing out my new tripod system. So um, I'm gonna try and tilt you down to where you can actually see me working instead of just seeing me because I'm up against my counter. And then if I walk towards my island, you just see Nellie's tushy in the back of her head <laughs> okay I think I think that's good so we're gonna do our spice blend first um, so what you need is smoked paprika garlic powder onion powder and parsley I know Nellie right so you need two tablespoons of dried parsley and I have my um, finely ground Raven Claws Parsley. Let's see on the back I wrote a label. A little extra in the bowl is not going to hurt anything, so I'm measuring over the bowl is fine. i got to fix Nelly. There. Okay, so put that away. I need to get more jars like that for some more of my spices. But then I worry they won't fit in my spice cabinet. <laughs> One tablespoon of onion powder. I did not make it to Sam's Club, so um, I had to get a regular size container. And then smoked paprika. That's our spicing. Um, that's our secret weapon right here. Okay, so one tablespoon smoked paprika. Now this is getting spread between the fish and our um, caper mayonnaise that I call caper aioli because I it can be like an aioli that's similar to a mayonnaise, but I just made homemade mayonnaise and we're going to use that. So then we need one and a half tablespoons of garlic powder. Perfect. Now we're not doing the salt and pepper because those are going to be separate. And you'll see. So let me move those out of my way because I'm done with those. I need these over here. Done with that. Right there. All right, I have a little fork here. I'm just going to mix it together. in the dish drainer behind me is the tilapia it was frozen i got it from sam's club last month um it's, it's only like the sixth day of june so you know last month was the 30th was when i got it so okay spice blend together so we're gonna set that aside oh, so good already. just the spice blend this is my homemade mayonnaise. I just stick it in a squeeze bottle for us. Now, I'm the only one that eats this. Um, one, Logan does not eat fish. He only eats um, shellfish. Oh, no, but you don't fuss now. Okay, so we're going to need um, a third of a cup of mayonnaise or aioli whichever you want to do if you want to make up some aioli go for it it's extremely similar all right a little heaping here but i don't mind because i love homemade mayonnaise okay put this in the sink 
Nellie, where are you going? Where are you going, honey bunny? I want your neck protected, so stay like this. Pardon me one minute while I scooch her around. She's got uh, reflux, so she gets... Okay, so I did about a teaspoon of the caper juice. And now we're just going to dig out some capers. And these ended up being bigger capers than I expected because I did a grocery pickup. I got these from Walmart. I was expecting the little tiny ones. That's good. Okay, so then mix your juice and your capers. I will get better at this camera stuff, guys. I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, you can still see it's thick. Um, so this is kind of like a, a tartar sauce, if you will. Set that aside. Okay, but now we're going to take our spice blend. We're going to do two teaspoons of it. And our caper mayo. Then we need salt and pepper. So, Nellie, where are you going? I have my witch's poison, which is my, you know, caper, or kosher salt. So I'm just doing a small pinch. You can adjust the salt to your taste or your healthcare needs. If you don't want any salt, by all means, leave it out because caper juice and capers are salty. So then we have, um, not that one, this one, um, black pepper dust, you know that pre-ground stuff that you put in salt, salt and pepper shakers, half a teaspoon. You can adjust that if you want. You can adjust how much spice blend you put in. You can adjust. Start off small. Give it a taste. The sink. Then I got a little rubber scraper here. Great. Give this a real good mix. I think the lighting is kind of washing it out. Give it a sip. Mmm. I would like more spice blend in it. I'm the only one eating this one. Millie, please stop doing that. I'm going to do another whole teaspoon. Because I want that smokiness from the smoked paprika to come through for my personal preference. Um, I did measuring, no measuring the first time I made this. Then... I did measuring the second time I did this and forgot to write it down. So better. Make sure you go easy on that kosher salt. That's really close to being too much. All right. Next we're gonna get our potatoes going. You need your oven preheated to 450 degrees. we are going to roast these with a little oil a little salt and pepper and then when they come out all done and crispy and roasted we're going to top them with some cider vinegar and have salt and vinegar potatoes kind of like salt and vinegar potato chips these are just as addictive as eating the potato chips you just we just can't seem to stop ourselves. Logan will eat these. He won't eat the fish, but he will eat these potatoes. So I will fix him a different protein. Probably just a hunk of chicken or something. So what you need is about, uh, for a regular recipe, one and a half pounds of potatoes, which is, you know, potatoes I'm using russet would be like two, two and a half because they're so big. But, um, I'm going to double up on that because we really like these potatoes. All 
All right, I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Potatoes cut into about one, one and a quarter inch. I mean, they're pretty big chunks. I really like them big. We're going to get these roasting, and then while they're roasting, we can work on our fish. Because it's a process, too. So these are all done. So what we're going to do, we're going to drizzle some two tablespoons of vegetable oil. You can use canola oil. It's, it's good go between. We're just going to do some fresh cracked black pepper to taste. You can use less, you can use more. And then a good hearty pinch of uh, kosher salt. All across it. All over it. Now you're going to mix it. And I'm doing it right on the baking sheet. The oil is going to help us with it. Oh, I dropped the potato. Oh no. Potato down. Potato down. I guess I should do this on the stove, but I'm trying this camera mount. Okay. Feels like all of them are coated in a little oil, a little salt, a little pepper. See that? Let me wash my hands real quick. This goes into a 450 degree oven that I have had preheated and then it is going to roast. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to bother it. We're just going to stick it in the oven. Where's my instructions on how long? Uh, 20 minutes. Doing it sideways. Keep Nelly away from the heat. Okay. She's good. So, uh, timer. 20 minutes. Now we're going to get our breading together for our fish. Two eggs. I have roughly, um, I don't know how much I have in spot here. One, two, three, four, five. That's right, five. Because it's usually four pieces that I do. But the way the tilapia came from Sam's Club, I did split the bag in half and did five one day. Now we're doing five today. These are just uh, coating trays I got from Camper Chef a while ago. A couple years ago. I don't even know if they still make them. Comes in a three piece. I only need two today. Come on, egg yolk. Mix in with the rest. And then we're going to do one and a half cups flour and half cup cornmeal. Okay, there's a half a cup of flour. Put that over there. One cup of flour. And I'm just using AP. So, you know, good old, good old standard standby. Okay, and then there you go. Of corn, yeah. Head flopping, head flopped out. It's all right, Nelly. It's all right, Mama's got you, okay? My little wiggle worm. Mommy, little wiggle worm. He's still wiggling, so I'm not letting go. Okay, but then we're going to take the spice blend and we're going to divide it between the two trays. Eyeball it. So 
So first, mix together our flour, our cornmeal, and our seasoning. Okay. Looking good. You can barely see it over there, I know. I can let go over now. She stopped wiggling. Okay, I'm just going to beat in our seasoning blend. Why am I doing both? Well, I want, I love the seasoning blend that I made, and I want the fish to be very flavorful with this seasoning blend. Okay, now we're going to go over to the stove. Get oil in the skillet and get our fish padded dry with paper towels. So, split second, be right back. Okay, we're back. I put Nellie down in her swing. She's in the living room with her daddy. Um, let's see if I can get this lunch going. So, in this skillet here, I put just a film of oil vegetable oil for frying and I turned it on oh better scissors okay. now the tilapia is coming in these little individual baggies when I get it frozen from Sam's by all means, if you can get fresh and you want fresh, you have fresh, use fresh. It's just it's easier for me to manage our meals. Okay. So, if I do frozen. So, into the egg wash are the beaten eggs. James Fotsy Cranky Wants. Okay. And then into the flour. I believe the skillet fits three at a time. And I'm pressing the flour cornmeal seasoning blend mixture into the fish because my fingers will always pull some off the fish. So I'm trying to be gentle, try to be careful. Make sure your oil is hot and ready to go. Okay? You do not want to put this in cold oil. Never fry in cold oil. Your food's just going to soak up the oil. Nope, dry it first, Chrissy. Come on. I'm getting distracted because somebody's upset. Kind of like um, dripping the egg wash back into the pan a little bit. Oh, I just, I just created such a big mess. Oh, that's going to be fun to clean later. I dropped it too hard into my flour mixture and now there's flour and cornmeal splattered all over my stove top. Giving Daddy the business. All right, into the egg. Okay, I got a pair of towels here that I'm drying each piece. Throwing the baggie in the sink to let the rest of the juice drain. Before I put it in a bag to take it out the garbage can so my house doesn't start to smell like rotten fish. It'll go out right away. Okay, so I have it on a power burner over medium heat. And the third piece of fish is in. Okay, wash my fingers. We have two to go.
Okay, I'm just gonna get a fresh piece of paper towel for the last two. And it's not a piece, it's, it's these, it's this kind of paper that has the quarter sections. So it's four quarters, or if you get the whole ones, it's two whole sheets of paper towel. This is super absorbent paper towel. While that's frying, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the paper towel. Now, what I do when I put them on the paper towel, I fold it over and press down. So pretend this hand's the counter. Press down. So you don't need two hands to squeeze it. So I'm gonna throw this one in the egg mixture. And then our last piece of tilapia on the paper towel, press down. Okay, so in there. Everything coming together happy, happy, happy. flour breading and coated and I'm just going to leave it there and then I'm going to take the last piece get it in the egg wash get it coated it's the end of the road here so it takes a little more with the egg but you'll have plenty of you should have plenty of flour left over should all right looks like the edges are coming together I'm going to bring it over and that is man. I'm trying guys. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> there, I think we got a better angle going for at least the breading setup I have. So now we're going to carefully flip our fish. Now it's it's a few minutes on each side. And you're like typed up there. Um three to four minutes. No, that's the green beans. About four. So, wash my hands again. <laughs> and that's going. It's safe. I'm going to give a binky. Okay, I'm turning down the heat on my fish a bit. Just a bit. I don't want to cool the oil too much, but I also don't want to overcook or overcook the outside and not have the inside done. That's what I'm trying to say here. So we have our caper mayo. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Potatoes have six minutes. Need to move some stuff here. I'm not trying to lighten the gut. Um, might need a little longer. I have written down 20. Maybe it's supposed to be 25. Maybe it's supposed to be 30. We're going to find out together. How about that? So now I'm going to get some fresh paper towels. And serving platter. This is the last thing Georgie gave me before he passed away. So we're gonna put the fish on that. Maybe maybe the potatoes, man, I don't know. Might leave the potatoes in the sheet pan. Okay, done with the oil. Oh, it smells so good in here, smelling fish, smelling potatoes. I'm going to measure our vinegar. Mm. Maybe. If I can find the right measure, I don't know what she is. This one only measures two. Got a glare there, don't you? Two tablespoons is what my little shot glass measuring cups measure too. And I got a little 
four tablespoons of cider vinegar. Uh oh, I think she lost her binky again. Okay, cider vinegar, ready to go. How y'all doing? Can you see the mess I made now? You see that? You see what I did? It's all, it's all, uh, gonna be a mess to clean up now. Let's get to that later tonight. I got things to do. Kelly and I still have to go for a walk. And then just remove two paper towel to drain briefly because you don't want it to get soggy and the breading stick to your paper towel. That would suck, right? All right. So I'm gonna get this fish that I left in the flour gently. If you squeeze it too tight, you're gonna put fingerprints in your breading all the way down to the meat. I'm doing I have a piece of paper towel off camera that after the egg wash, I kind of briefly wipe the egg wash off my fingers just so my fingers don't get like overloaded with um, breading sticking to it because there's egg wash on my fingers. Gently. Ah. Okay. That's the last two pieces. These have been on the paper towel. I'm going to find my spatula and I'm going to move this. And we are going to take our first piece here. We're gonna flip it over and let the side that drained on the paper towel come have the um, access to air. So it can it can stay crispy. You see the mess I made? Like seriously. That was stupid. Okay. Throw this out. Now, if you think that's just too wasteful, which it kind of is, yeah, it's not like needle, um, then just cut it in half, you know. Um, maybe next time I'll try one cup flour, half cup cornmeal. I think that extra half a cup of flour was not necessary. And I'm looking at the next you talking to you and you can't even see my head. See my shirt, see my shirt. See the shape of the baby crawling. I don't know if you can read any of those words. This is a shirt that I got from the National Center for Shaken Baby Syndrome. Because if you've watched any of my other videos, especially that first one I did, um, my oldest son was shaken by his biological father that I refer to as the sperm donor while I was at work one night. And uh, shook him extremely violently. And he survived it barely and lived to be almost 16 years old. He passed away five years ago this July. So this shirt, um, they posted on Facebook if you wanted your survivor's name or your victim's name on the shirt in the shape of the baby to just email him. So I did. I emailed him his first and middle name, no last name. Um, and his name's here somewhere. Here, right here it says, George Zechariah. <laughs> George Zechariah. That's for my baby. All right, you ready to check the potatoes? The start looks pretty good. Pan. <laughs> I love that, guys. Should have used my non stick bacon. Here. Oh, runaway potato. Runaway two potatoes.
do so wrong? I've never had it stick before. Of course, it's sticking when I'm trying to do this for you guys on camera. But, you know, this is like, this is how you make mistakes and you work with it. You roll with it, right? Some things can be salvaged. Some things cannot. Where's my spoon? Where's my spoon? Okay. They look pretty good. I'm going to throw them back in for, like, they're cooked. I just want them a little browner. So, they're not spreading out. I'm going to give them 10 more minutes. And I just put 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. There. 10 minutes. Flipping fish. It's been 4 minutes. This time I know for sure because I got the timer. Okay. Still have it over medium heat. These are definitely nice and brown. I skipped a step. Oh, Lord, people. You know, sleep deprived brain from having a baby, a new baby in the house, is, is a real thing. Postpartum brain, sleep deprived brain, neurological disorder brain. Add it all together, my brain's a mess. But, anyways, what you're supposed to do, what I should have done and didn't do this time, but I did all the other times, is take the fish, dry it on my paper towel, right? My paper towel, I showed you. Sprinkle it with salt and pepper. I was going to use my salt and pepper shakers so we didn't have too much salt and pepper. So what I'm going to do now is salt the fish that's already cooked. And I'm going to salt these two pieces. And if Al and I want pepper, we'll just shake pepper on it after we eat it. Or while we're eating it, I should say. Not after. That's stupid. Oh my god. I feel like I fall asleep standing up. What's keeping me going right now? I got the camera rolling. <laughs> just giving this daily a nice stir. It's not an aioli, it's a mayo, but, you know. It's my homemade mayo turned into a wonderful condiment for the fish. How about that? How about that? I'm going to bring the vinegar over here because the potatoes are going to be here. I'm not wearing an apron because they are both in the wash. So, <sighs> my Georgie shirt got flour and stuff on it now. She just needs it for a minute and then she spits it out. She never even keeps it in her mouth the whole time. I know some people are anti-binky and that's their prerogative. That's cool. I am not anti-binky. Now the boys, Georgie and Logan, did not care for binkies. They didn't want binkies, nothing to do with binkies. They didn't even suck on their thumbs or fingers. Not her. She enjoys the binky. It's soothing. She likes to chew on her fingers, suck her thumb, kind of suck her thumb, more chew on it. So, yeah, it'll be my first baby to break up the binky unless she does it on her own. Some kids do it on their own. I'm going to fall asleep. I swear to God, I'm going to fall asleep. All right, we'll be back in eight minutes. That's when the potatoes will be done. I almost forgot to hit record, dude, man, guys. Okay, fresh out of the oven. I let them go for a total of an extra five minutes, so that's 25 minutes. So we're just pouring the vinegar over, just using a big spoon, kind of tossing it around in the vinegar. Now if you do half the amount of potatoes I do, you only need two tablespoons of vinegar, okay? I want to over vinegar on. All right, now that we got the vinegar on, we're going to salt. I'm going to get the witch's poison. You know, kosher salt, witch's poison. Light sprinkle. So that's like a light pinch, okay? Or you can skip it, or you can do less at each one. I don't have a preference for you. You may have a preference for you, though. So, let me get a plate together. Okay, and here is my plate. 
Don't run away fish. Okay, I'm gonna move this platter. There. Now, there's not a whole lot of, AO, of the caper mayo right here. It's it's very powerful and it just I just like to dip it. You can smear it on top if you want, but I like to get a, a little bit of it on my fork and then a piece of fish because I find, I don't know if it's just because of the way I shake or what. Okay, cut me a piece. You can see this is the thicker side and it is cooked beautifully, nice and flaky. And then a little dip and a little fish. There you go. It's really freaking hot. <laughs> really freaking hot. I feel hot. It's not a hot day, but I try to turn on the AC a little late um, to be doing a 450 degree oven. And it was on for longer than the 35 minutes, 35, 25 minutes, um, because I had turned it on and then Nellie was hungry. So I went and fed her. So that was an extra hmm, 30, 45 minutes that it was preheated. Because just as it heated up and got to 450, she was ready. She she wanted her ba. So mommy stopped what she was doing, went and got her her ba. Guys. So freaking good. So freaking good. Love this fish. Love these potatoes that are still steaming. <laughs> Mm. So if you like salt and vinegar chips, you will love these potatoes. If you taste them and you want more vinegar, add more vinegar. This is what works for us. Tweak it. Do you. I do me, you do you. Cool? Okay, so I've rambled on enough. I've shown you this wonderful fish and potatoes. I'm hot. I'm going to go sit down, eat my lunch, and cool off. Okay? So, until next time.